Hi, I'm Nancy Berliner from HPE Technical Marketing Engineering. This video explores HPE Primera's transparent failover feature, Peer Persistence. Peer Persistence requires two storage arrays with synchronous replication. On the hosts, industry standard MPIO is used to mark the paths to the primary array as active and the paths to the secondary as standby. If you want to load balance between systems or do site maintenance, you can manually swap the primary and standby paths. You can move compute resources with a host-based tool such as VMware vMotion. And most importantly, if you have a site-wide disaster, a quorum witness running in a VM acts as an independent arbitrator so that failover is automatic and completely transparent to the hosts and applications. Peer persistence is included with every Primera system, so there's no additional hardware or software to purchase. For this demo, I have two systems named S3042 and S3044, and I've started a workload in a VM on S3042. The quorum witness is already deployed, but I'll set up replication from scratch and then demonstrate a manual switchover and a simulated site failure. Here I am at the dashboard of the SSMC Management Console. First, I need to establish the links between the two systems by creating a remote copy configuration. Although replication is supported over both IP and fiber channel, I'm going to use the built-in 10 gig IP ports that come with each system. It's just point and click to pair up the sets of ports. I've already assigned the IP addresses, but if I hadn't, I could add them now. Once that's done, adding the IP address of the quorum witness will allow for automated failover in the event of a disaster. Communication to the quorum witness is supported over both HTTP and HTTPS, but for this demo, I'm not going to enable the secure connection. The final step is to create a remote copy group to contain the volumes you want to replicate. Since the links between systems are bidirectional, the remote copy group is where you specify which system is the primary. It's always easier to let the system create the target volumes for you rather than manually selecting existing target volumes. For peer persistence volume pairs, the SSMC creates a target whose worldwide name matches the source in order to appear to the host as if it's a single volume. There are a few settings to select. If you want the system to switch the primary and secondary roles and begin replicating after either a manual or automatic failover, you'd enable auto-synchronize. And for an automatic failover only, Auto-Recover will automatically restart replication when the systems can communicate once more. For peer persistence, path management enables the active standby pathing that I spoke about earlier, and auto-failover enables the transparent failover when the primary site fails. And finally, you need to add the source volumes. It's possible to add up to 200 in a single peer persistence group, but I have just the one named Z underscore PP1. As soon as the group is created, it begins syncing the data, and you can monitor the progress in the volume pairs dropdown. The auto-generated target volumes have the same name as the source, but with dot R appended to the end. I'll pause the video and resume when the sync has completed. The last step is to go to the Virtual Volumes page to make the target volume visible to the VMware host that's running the source workload by exporting it to that host. The source volume was exported as LUN1, so I'm going to make the target LUN11 in order to make it easy to differentiate the two in the demo. Now in vCenter, after a rescan, you can see that the paths to LUN1, the primary volume, are active in serving I.O., while the paths to the secondary, LUN11, are designated as standby. Now I'm ready to do the manual switchover in the SSMC. 
If you remember, I initially set S3042 as the primary system and S3044 as a secondary for this remote copy group. On the right is a CLI session for each system running the stat vlun command to show their performance. S3042 on the top is doing about 12,000 IOPS, while S3044 on the bottom is completely idle. Switch over from the Actions menu will do just what it sounds like, cause the workload to switch places. Meanwhile, keep your eyes on the performance screens. And there it goes. The workload is now running on S3044, and the direction of replication has also switched. S44 is the primary system, and Z underscore PP1.R is the primary volume. And in vCenter, you can see that the pathing has switched places. LUN11 is now serving I.O., while the paths to LUN1 have become standby. If I wanted to reverse direction of replication again, I could simply go back to the SSMC and perform another switchover. For the final part of the demo, I'm going to simulate the failure of the entire array by issuing commands to block all communication with the primary system. It's always up to the secondary array to initiate the failover. But before that can happen, the secondary must first verify that the primary is truly unavailable and that it's not just that the replication links are down. That's the purpose of the quorum witness. Since it communicates on a different network via the array's management ports, it can confirm that the primary array is truly unresponsive. Here I am back at the SSMC, and I've done the second switchover so that S3042 is again the primary for replication, and the workload is active in the top CLI session. Then, for this part of the demo, I have two additional CLI sessions with commands teed up to simulate the failure of S3042. The control port command will bring down S3042's RCIP ports. And there's a script on the Linux VM that's hosting the Quorum Witness to stop it from communicating with S3042's management IP address. You need to enter both commands in quick succession. And if you look to the right, after only a few seconds, you can see the workload seamlessly fail over to the secondary array which is in the CLI session on the bottom of the screen. When S3042 becomes available again and the links between the two systems are back up, replication will automatically resume with S3044 as the primary. When the two systems are in sync again, it's a simple switch over to move the workload back to where it started. I hope you've enjoyed this demo. For more information or to see videos on additional topics, visit hpe.com/storage.